Halloween is right around the corner Reddit, what is the most paranormal thing you have ever experienced? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I was never a believer in ghosts, spirits, the paranormal, UFOs, and stuff. About two years ago, me and a buddy decided to go on a drive. It was a hot summer's night, and we were bored out of our minds. So we picked up some cigarettes and went on a late night drive. We decided to drive to the top of the mountain. The base of the mountain is about an hour's drive from where I lived, and it takes about another hour to drive all the way up to the top where they have a restaurant bar. This is in Norway, by the way. It was pretty late, around 3 a.m. in the morning. We knew the bar would be closed, but we thought we would just chill on the benches, have a smoke, and take in the view at first light. So, we get to the base of the mountain and start driving up and round. The road twists around the mountain until you get to the top, so when you reach a turn, you can barely see around the corner. It was pitch black darkness. Only the road was visible due to the streetlights, but apart from the road, the edges and mountainside were barely visible. We had been driving for about half an hour. Everything was pretty enjoyable. Absolutely empty roads. Guess all the sane ones were asleep in bed, ready to wake up and go to work in the morning. Complete silence. It was just relaxing. As we turn one of the bends, I get this very uneasy feeling as I see something, definitely a person, sitting on a boulder at the edge of the road. My friend sees this as well but keeps driving, and I'm thinking, WTF bro, but I realize that he is turning the car around and going back because it's pretty treacherous to reverse on that road. So we head back, slowly, and I realize that he is fine. He's not getting any bad feelings, he's in his normal mood. So I convince myself that I'm acting weird, and that it's probably just some crazy hiker. We park the car right opposite this figure, engine still running, and my friend calls out, Hi there, are you okay? I have to admit, I was still pretty scared, so I didn't say anything. No response. The figure then looks up in our direction, and we get the effing shit scared out of us. We saw that it was a woman, wearing a plain white dress, with very long, beautiful hair, but her face was three times the length of the normal person's face. Her eyes were completely blank, and she had a smile on her face. I swear to God, we both felt so fearful that we were completely paralyzed. We couldn't yell or even communicate, not even a single word. It felt like we couldn't move. I don't know how he found the courage to press the gas and get the hell out of there, but I do remember that when we both got home, we had a very high fever, and we were like that for a couple more days afterwards. This might get long, sorry. A dorm at a local university had a student die of alcohol poisoning on his 21st birthday, and there have been lots of reports of creepy things happening in the room he died in. Students reported tapping from the inside of the windows, shoes being rearranged while they were out, and a loud scraping noise that came from upstairs. People upstairs thought it was coming from downstairs. Anyways, there's a youth sports camp that uses this dorm for a summer residence, and I was a counselor, so I stayed in the dorm with the kids. I was assigned to stay in the room that the aforementioned student died in. I grew up in the same town as this college, so I knew all about the ghost and didn't think anything of it. There's no such thing as ghost, right? I moved in and the only thing that looked different about the room compared to the others in the dorm were that there was a crucifix. During my week, shit got weird. Several times I heard loud tapping from inside of my window. One night I poked my head outside of the door late one night and yelled, lights out, to some kids running down the hall. My lights promptly turned out inside my room. Finally, during a break at the end of the week, I went back to my room for a nap. I found my TV was on and the volume was extremely loud. I didn't think much of it. Maybe the kids had been playing PS2 in my room and forgot to turn it off. I grabbed the remote, laid on the bed, and hit the power button. The TV stayed on. I took the batteries out, tried again, and still the TV was on. I picked my lazy ass up, walked to the TV, and pressed the power button. Nothing. I turned the volume down. Nothing. I finally unplugged the TV and... Nothing. Totally freaking out, I unplugged the cable cord, thinking maybe some weird surge through that was keeping the TV on. Nope. I sat there holding the TV power cord, cable cord, and remote, and was watching my TV continue to play. I ran from the room, got another counselor, and showed them. He promptly freaked the F out, and we left the building to get the camp director. And when he got to my room, the TV was off. F. T L D R. Ghosts really wanted to watch Jerry Springer in my dorm room. A friend of mine tends to wake up in the middle of the night and then go to sleep a few moments after. The weird thing is that almost every night he wakes up at 3.38 a.m. precisely and shortly after a gruesome howl, like a very freaky powerful scream but at low volume, will appear for approximately 10 seconds and then just nothing. I wish I could say he was crazy, 
but after I crashed at his place one night, he woke me up just after he himself had woken up at 3.38 a.m. again, and he said, Now, listen. I heard the scream too. I've never felt such an intense fear in my life. My twins were two months old and barely sleeping through the night. As most nights go, my wife and I, whose room is adjacent to the nursery, were woken up around 2 a.m. to some crying coming from one of the cribs. It was my turn to get up, so I saunter over to Gabe, one of the twins, and I hear a woman say, It's okay, Gabe. My wife goes, Did you hear that? She didn't say it. I didn't say it. To this day, we have no idea where the voice came from. It wasn't my wife's voice. Mine's not scary, but I guess it qualifies as paranormal. Please note, I have no belief whatsoever in the paranormal of any kind and tend pretty strongly to the James Randi end of the believer spectrum. I will say that this is absolutely true, and I haven't even thought about it in decades. This thread caused me to remember it. Anyway, whatever. I had a best friend when I was in my early preteens, maybe 10 to 12 years old, who lived about three miles away from me. We'd often walk or bike to each other's house, depending on whatever we were planning to do. The hiking route was through a very thickly wooded area, which had a deep ravine right about the middle of it. From my backyard, you entered the woods, and when you emerged on the other side, you'd be in his backyard, which was actually a huge set of fields. They were farmers. There were fairly clear trails through the woods, and it was an arduous journey in either direction, which actually made it more fun. Nice to be off the streets and in the woods, you know? But these woods were weird. Like I said, it was very thickly wooded, and you had to descend into and back out of a fairly deep ravine, with the stream running through the bottom. The ravine section of the trip had no trails, and you just roughing it by dead reckoning for that section. Oddly, there was very little copse in the ravine that had a fountain in it. A regular man-made ceramic fountain like you'd see at any garden center, but empty of water. Right there, way out in the middle of nowhere, it was sort of standing on a base of some rocks. So on multiple occasions, most often in the deep winter, I'd set out through the woods, bash my way down the ravine, past the fountain, and then up the other side, freezing cold by now, and then through the last half of the woods trail. And then I'd walk out of the woods into my own backyard, right where I'd started. The first time this happened, I called my buddy up on the phone and was like, dude, I just hiked all the way to your house and ended up at my house. He sort of wigged out and said, dude, you're effing kidding me. That happened to me last week coming to your house. So over a period of maybe two years, most especially during the winter, when there was a lot of snow, we noted that this happened to each of us independently maybe four or five times. Not every time, by any means, only rarely. So we decided to make several trips together in one day. Once again, it was in winter, very cold, deep snow, and the walk was a pain in the ass. The first trip was from my house and, sure enough, through the woods, down the ravine, past the fountain, back up the ravine, out of the woods, and we were at my house, where we started. I shit you not. So, on the second trip, we were already sick of this shit by now and not really interested in doing it again because it was a pain in the ass. We decided to take a slightly different route, around the bowl of the ravine and out the other side without descending. It took a lot longer, but we ended up at his house, as one would expect. We abandoned the experiment at that point and just played Atari for the rest of the afternoon and I stayed overnight. I remember his weird mom made us French toast the next morning and it was delicious. I took the standard trip the next day, but in the valley of the ravine, I purposely avoided the cops with the fountain, ended up back at my house normally. It's not an exciting story, except maybe the French toast, but I will say this. During the early spring after our experiment, my best friend's mother took her own life. Don't know why but I never experienced the travel anomaly again after that. I think maybe it's because my best friend became pretty withdrawn afterwards, and we saw less and less of each other. Our travels through the woods became much less frequent and eventually just stopped. I haven't seen that guy in 35 years. I can't help but wonder what he's up to now. Several years ago, while I was a freshman in high school, my dog died of an inoperable tumor in his liver. Fast forward six or eight months, I'm home alone. My brother was just hospitalized, beginning his two-year, one-month journey of near-death surgeries and recovering. My parents were at work, so I was home by myself after I'd got off of from rehearsal. I went to the kitchen to find some food and took it to my room to eat. When I was just outside my door, I had a strange feeling that someone was behind me and that I wasn't alone in the house. Turning around, I saw nobody there. Before I entered my room, I caught a glimpse of a misty figure about knee level. 
I was slightly creeped out but just brushed it off as nothing. I go into my room and sit on my bed with the door closing behind me but not completely shut. I was on my bed staring at the door still in disbelief about what I'd saw. Suddenly, the door pushes open gently and slightly just like my dog used to do. At that point, I wasn't scared but more comforted in the fact that he was there with me. It is a weird feeling but if you've ever experienced it, you'd understand what I mean. I eventually told my mom what happened several weeks later and she said she had been experiencing strange things also. When we got a new dog, who was a four-month-old puppy at the time, she would also stare at things curiously. One time, she was staring at the curtains for the longest time but staying where she was, and the curtains began gently moving, as if someone had touched them. There was no draft right there, as I found out after. I missed that sweet boy of mine. We rescued him from a life as an abandoned and mistreated dog, and was very loyal and protective of the whole family. Although this story wasn't as creepy as many others, I feel that my experiences justify why I believe in ghosts and residual energy. Pretty simple story. I was an early riser as a kid, and since I walked to school, that meant I was often the first person there. Sometimes I'd talk to my teachers in the morning about homework or even doing extra work. Well, one day I got to class, first one there at all, and my teacher leaves to get something from the printer. She says she's not supposed to leave me alone in the room, but since she's gotten to know me and trust me, she'll just lock the door behind her and we'll be back in two minutes. She leaves. I hear the door lock, and not ten seconds later, one of the chairs of a desk in front of me slams itself into the desk. I practically shit my pants, unlocked the door, and bolted for the front office. Never went to school early again. When I was about 11, I went through this really bizarre period in my life where I was exhausted all the time because I had started having really vivid, involved dreams, so it felt like I never slept. The dreams were linear, and I was the star of them, but I was someone else, a girl named Cheryl, who was 16 years old, living in Texas in the 80s. There was nothing weird about the dreams in general, it was just that, for the entire time I was asleep, I was another person, in a different body, with a different family, doing perfectly ordinary things and the dreams always started out the same way. I would go to sleep as me, and wake up as Cheryl, but not really Cheryl. I knew I wasn't her, but couldn't convince anyone else I wasn't. I would go eat breakfast with her family, go to school, take her classes, talk to her friends, and then go back to sleep in her bed and wake up as me again. This lasted for months, started off slowly, maybe one or two dreams a week, until finally they were every single night. In the real world, I started falling asleep in classes, had an overabundance of migraines, prone to them anyway, was completely anemic and just generally sickly. Nothing super awful happened in the dreams except for the pressure of taking high school classes with stuff I'd never learned before because I was actually 11 and trying to pass courses based on material that was way above my age range. Also, trying to fit in with her family and friends because I was still me just in her body, I didn't actually recognize them or remember them or our supposed in-jokes or family history. I could pass it all off as just stress and say that it was totally unremarkable if it weren't for the fact that I actually did learn shit from the classes I took at her high school, stuff that I couldn't have known, hadn't studied, and wouldn't learn until I was in high school myself. That's cool. I work in a nursing home, so we have weird things happen all the time. Socks traveling across the hall by themselves, cupboards opening and stuff flying out, lights turning off and on, washing machines just sitting all full of ice water for no reason, etc., but our Alzheimer's unit has the most activity. All of our Alzheimer's rooms have special sensors, so we know if a resident is getting out of bed or leaving their room. It is to assure we know where they are and that they don't fall. One particular night, a call light kept going off, promptly followed by that room's bathroom sensor being tripped. This room's resident had passed away three days before, and we didn't have anyone else in there yet. We turned it off about four times in three hours, and we were pretty creeped. Then, at 10 p.m., just an hour before I got to leave, we heard a lady screaming for help. We ran back to the source, and it turned out to be in that same room. The bathroom sensor started going off again right when we got there. We had to check in case some other residents had gone in, but there was no one. The sink and shower were both running full blast with ice-cold water, though. I turned everything off and reset the switch and gently pulled the door closed as I left. Halfway through closing it, someone or something slammed it closed for me. I almost had my shoe caught. When my parents got divorced, my mother moved to a nice lake house. She bought it from a widow whose husband had died of lung cancer. 
We are not sure if he passed away in the house, but we do know that during his last years, he would only stay in the house when he wasn't at the hospital. The couple had no children and no other family. My sister and I assumed he passed away or spent most of his time on the second story, where our two bedrooms and bathroom were. I often felt like someone was watching me in my room at night and would hear creaks from my dresser like someone was leaning on it. My sister felt the same way, but about someone sitting in a chair in her room and it was creaking. We would both awake in the middle of the night with just an eerie feeling that we were being watched. Some doors would seem to close when we could not recall opening or closing them. My bedroom entrance had two double doors that opened inward to the room. A walk-in closet, before that opened inward toward the closet, a door to the bathroom that opened outward towards the room with a double sink for my sister and I, and a door to a room with a shower and toilet that opened inward. There was also a door from my sister's room to where the sinks were, and a door to her bedroom. The important thing to recognize is that the doors open in different directions. One night, as I was getting ready for bed, I thought I heard something move, and I quickly turned around and looked in the mirror that was behind me. Immediately upon making eye contact with my reflection, all of the second floor doors slam, bam, 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 bam. At the same time, six swift slams echoed across the house. There was no window open, no air conditioner on, no fans, Minnesota in winter, and the double doors that had been open slammed together. I felt trapped and ran to jiggle the double door handle and fled, running down the stairs. A few moments later, I was heading upstairs towards my bedroom after dinner. My sister had been on the computer in my room before dinner when it was lights out, but as it got darker while we ate, the only light on in my bedroom was radiating dully from the old iMac in my room. As I got into my room, I thought I saw something move, but again, the only light was from the dull blue computer screen. I turned to hit the light switch, but thought I saw something move, so I stopped with my hand on the switch. Within the light cast by the computer, there was a shadow that was unfamiliar and it began to move. It was two shadows, really, and they looked like legs. Slowly, the two shadows moved again, like legs, but they were slowly walking towards me. They were almost transparent, like light shining through wax paper. As they approached me, I screamed, and through the light switch, I never slept on the second floor again. TL, Doctor. My house was haunted, and the ghost seemed to be a bit lost and confused and thought he still belonged there. Also, loved closing doors.